Hello, replay viewers. So you can see I made my five minute walk from my, the end of my last scope. Hi, Karen. And here I am in this really, really awesome Amherst College geology building and museum. A lot of these skeletons are real. They were, hi, hi Richard. They were excavated uh, uh, decades ago. Yeah, take a photo. There's, there's more to come. This is just the starting picture. This geology museum, hi Rich, this geology museum has lots and lots of great stuff. And I believe it has the biggest collection of dinosaur footprints uh, east of the Mississippi River. So, so we'll just look around real slow. And I really can't, um, I like to show you the captions. All these things have, have uh, little, little placards explaining them. But there's a lot of fine print. Yeah, I used to, the, the building this all used to be housed in, I showed you earlier. I just love coming into that building. It also had a collection of strange mangy birds and animal heads. I don't know why they had animal heads on the wall. But this building is a little bit smaller for budgetary purposes, so the, the odd exhibits of the mangy birds and the animal heads are no longer. And what's left is, is better illuminated. The, the notices, the explanations are better. Everything's pretty well lit. Just look at all this cool stuff. This is all real. Almost none of this is fake. This is, this is all dug up. This is the, Karen, this is the geology museum. If you're asking what this, this particular critter is, this is a dinosaur. This is a real dinosaur. And I can, let's see where it says, here it is. Everything in here is real. There's very little fake. That's what I'm getting right to you. There you go. So when you excavate a dinosaur skeleton, there'll often be sometimes missing parts. So you do have to sometimes fabricate, fabricate uh, the missing parts or, or provide like a strong structure to attach the, the bones to. But this is a real dinosaur. This is the real thing. That's why I love coming into the museum. There's just so much to see. I love this guy. Would you like to run into him on a dark night? Would you like to run into him on a clear day? No. We all know what he is. Even, even a child would know that one, right? You knew that one, right? Yeah, these are, that's just the head. Imagine the, uh, the body. That's impressive. So here's another uh, large one. And you can see where they did use some, some filler material to strengthen it. Now this one, of course, everybody knows what this one is. And I'll tilt back up in just a second. You all know what this one is. That's the famous one. This is the real thing. These are all dug up. I wish it was a little bit lighter in here. I think this is just, this is what I mean by the dinosaur footprint collection. This is uh, one of the slabs. You can see this is how it's, it's been categ categ categorized uh, or, or indexed. So there's all dinosaur footprints and things. You can't see it. I'll show you some better ones in a minute. Get back, look at those teeth. Those teeth are made for, for doing business. That's for sure. Hello, 207. So this is a di diorama. This is just for illustrative purposes. As, as, they, uh, as the artist thought things might have looked ages ago. So here's a, a dinosaur footprint slab that's well lit up. This is all real. Some dinosaur millions of years ago was, was on this on this muddy ground, which then became mineralized and hardened up, and eventually it was exposed. And a lot of these footprints were turned up by people plowing in the 1800s, and they didn't want these rocks 
of strange creatures, so they had to get rid of them, and they knew there is this crazy professor. Yes, it's very interesting here. They knew there was this crazy professor who collected these things, so they'd bring the, the professor these, these slabs. Now, this one doesn't have any dinosaur footprints, but this is a braided stream. This is not a braided, it's a ripple stream bed. So again, millions of years ago, this was a river, where a little stream was running here. You can see the ripples. Fascinating stuff. I'm doing a live video. I <laughs> well, I, I kind of know what I'm talking about. No, you're good, you're good. <laughs> I used to be a geology student here. Oh, oh excellent. Yeah, so I knew Ed Belt. I just ran into Jack Cheney. Oh, yep. He was going to lunch. So I know a little bit of what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right, but this is, this is the, the impressive part of the collection. And this is just a small portion of what they actually have. I was just talking to the education, uh, the man in charge of edu education. So this is, this is why this museum has the biggest collection of dinosaur footprints east of the Mississippi. And this is just a small display of what they actually have in, in storage. These are all, yeah, I was a geology student. I took a lot, I took, the most classes I took in any subject was in geology. Now, did I remember it all? No, but apparently I, re I remembered enough that the man I was just talking to was, was impressed. So this is cool. You can't operate it, but they made these slabs into basically a book. And you can see how the footprints on the left, if you hinge it, will go right on into the ones on the right because this, this rock was split horizontally. It, it, it came apart nicely, and you can see how the footprints are uh, deeply embedded. So they got two, two for the price of one. And there's a couple, uh, I was an astronomy major, but I took a lot of geology classes. And you can see how there's, there's other, other slabs here. That's how they managed to split the two slabs we're looking at. And here's another one that you can actually operate. So this is called a track book. This one is a re reproduction of what's on the wall, so that's why it's exposed and, and why you can touch it. It's made of plastic. So isn't that cool? All right. So what we have here is, is too much to talk about. You have just a, a huge room, and this is only, hi Ed, this is just a huge room, and this is only part, part of the entire collection. Of, of dinosaur footprints and related uh, material. So we just saw a rippled stream bed. Here's another rippled stream bed from the dinosaur times. Over here you can see this one. This one is awesome. It rained hard and a little dinosaur with a little tail went running across, probably while it was raining. You can, you can look at these things that are millions of years old and look at they're telling a story. That little dinosaur, his little footprints, his little tail, and all the little plops of raindrops. Isn't that incredible? That these things are preserved and they get turned up. Some of them take a little more interpretation than others, but you can see there's a dinosaur footprint. So they're all kinds of sizes. And you can see the texture of these, these rocks are slightly different. That's a bigger dinosaur. And these things, you can come in and the public can come in and you can touch them. It's really, really impressive. So this is more of a, a sandstony uh, rock. I'm trying to hold the phone way up. Someone way up. Someone wrote uh, to a little scale. But who would have thought that dinosaur footprints would, would turn up in this area and become exposed when farmers were plowing their fields? Here's a pretty one. You can try to make up stories. Hi, Cindy, Jody. So you can see this dinosaur didn't, didn't walk very fast. Yeah, this is an incredible, I love this museum. This is one of my favorite, favorite places to visit. Just, that was just one, one little piece of, of this room. You can hear them. There's more upstairs. Greetings from Turkey. So here's another probably example of a, uh, of a stream situation. Do not touch. 
where water, running water might have done something. You see these are all, these were mounted. Hey, Sarah. This is my favorite museum, Sarah. Look at these cool things. Um, let's see if I can find another example. Here's a good one that's lit up. So a lot of, a couple dinosaurs ran around here. You can see the mixed up footprints. There's a, there's a single footprint up in the, the top. Let's see what's on the next, the next aisle. So what they have here, they have so many, so many things to show that these, um, some of these racks, and I don't know how you do it, but these racks here will slide back and forth somehow so you can, can get at the inner ones. I have no idea what this is. What do you think? It's very strange. Maybe, uh, I don't know, why, why would, what, what is this? I wish they had a little sign explaining it. Another big dinosaur footprint. They're all over the place. Let's see. I'm just walking up and down. Walk with me. Yeah, do not touch. I'm not touching. The only thing I could touch, I already did touch. It was a reproduction of something. So let's see what's over here. Yes. I'm trying to find, we're gonna to get to more footprints in just a second. This is, this is more uh, uh, stream material. Yep, do not touch, there's a few footprints here. And here's, here's a, this used to be a, a, a mud flat and it dried up and you got cracked, cracked mud that then became mineralized and turned into this rock, which then eventually millions of years ago became exposed after, uh, after sitting underground. So here's the cool stuff. Here's the big guy. Look at this. I have to back up some more. I want to make sure I don't hit my head on something. That set of footprints is gigantic. We saw a little one earlier. This is, this is one of the bigger ones. Let's see. Here's a couple big ones here. And this is all real stuff. These, these aren't plastic or reproductions or, or models. This is all real that was dug up probably 100, 120 years ago. Farmers were plowing their fields and they'd run into rocks. And the rocks, they didn't want the rocks in their fields, so they knew this guy that they could bring them to, which is how this collection came to be. So look at these huge, this is the, this is the big footprint section. See, this stuff you can touch. It's all rock, just don't want to pick at it. So you can see this one, yeah, this is all in the Northeast. This is all in, this all came from Hadley, Massachusetts. So you can see this one was used for some class or research project because the footprints have been chalked in and they probably measured um, the different toes and nails and, and whatever attributes dinosaur feet. Pro someone probably studied dinosaur feet and so they, they chalked them in or painted them in so they could, could make measurements. Now what's behind me? Let's see what's behind me. All right, another example of, of, a, of a rippled stream bed. The river was running and there was mud and it, and it got made into little ripples and then for some reason the, the stream might have been diverted and the mud dried up and became mineralized and uh, into a rock. Oh, look at this one. This is a nice big one that raised my arms way up. Dinos these are all real, real dinosaur footprints. Nothing fake or made up. And I'm just, this is just the basement level. One professor took it upon, this is the original sign. And look, a, a large donation was considered $25. That was worth being put on a, on a sign. When, the, uh, when they started to preserve these things. All right, let's go out. Has everyone seen the, the skeletons? Because I'm about to go upstairs. If you're, if you're late and you missed the skeletons, I'll do a quick pass through again. Tyrosaurus rex. I don't, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce this one. You can read that for yourself. 
little guy. And we're going to go upstairs in a minute. Look at the legs on this guy. Big, big legs. Can't even show the whole thing in, in the frame. We all know Terra Stop. Terra, I can't even pronounce it. I'm getting tired. All right, let's go upstairs before they close. I think time's running out. We'll see what's upstairs. So the heavy things, the footprints, are downstairs, and the lighter things are upstairs. So you can see how the things went from, I'm going to walk in the wrong direction, but you can see how things went from larger to smaller. All right, I've been saving the best for, for around this corner. Coming up on the right, some cool things. Looking for a sign that says says its name, but I'm not seeing it. Here's here's a list. But I don't want you to look at signs. This is I'm gonna back up. The best thing's right behind me. We're gonna build up to it. There's some fossils embedded in, in preserving material. So the locations were, were kept as they were found. So you saw for dinosaur footprints, but that's not all that's preserved. You also can have fish. These are fossil fish. 45 million years ago, the little placards are saying. Now this is pretty cool. This is a fossil of this animal. This is his burrow. So somehow it, it became filled in and mineralized, and someone discovered it, and then it got added to the collection. So here is what I've been waiting to show you. This is the impressive stuff. Just take a look at that. After this building was constructed, there's a, a time lapse of these being assembled. It's really fun to see, see over the course of you know, a few minutes how these were reassembled from their previous location. They had to disassemble them and store them, while the old museum was 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 being uh, converted to classroom into student housing, and the new museum was being built. Then they finished this one, and they had to reassemble it. So it's really cool to find a time lapse. So here's a here's a sign that explains things. So just look at look at the look at the size of this this guy. And there's the other half. Yeah, this is a, this is one of this is my favorite my favorite places to visit. Just look at these 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 animals from from millions of years ago. Here, I did mention that the collection consisted of many, many main. I have three live viewers right now. Not a great turnout, but can I put you on video? Oh, certainly. All right. A friend of mine who was the caretaker caretaker at Audubon happened to come across the box and said, "Oh my goodness, oh, what's in the box?" He started right. to pull the birds out. And these were, were something of interest. And he read the tags. And mm -hmm. Audubon was written on tag after tag after right, tag. Right, right, right. So then they were valuable. And then he realized, "Oh my goodness, something's wrong here." You shouldn't be throwing them away. No. So he contacted the college and said, "What should I do with these?" And the college said, "Why do you have those?" And they were ready to send the police. Oh. Not realizing oh. that somebody had, they donated them. That they had donated them a hundred years ago. <laughs> exactly. Right. So he ended up reconnecting with That's a wonderful the story. And then, you know, the birds were reacquired. Yeah, yeah. But given that most of them are laced with arsenic, mm. you know, which was the preservative right. of, the, of the time, choice preservative, they're now here in the collection, but they're sealed up. Right. That's why they're not. That's why they're not. Right, out. yeah. So we're limited to, as you pointed out, the, the, the two. The two mangy birds. The two mangy birds are, you know, ivory-billed woodpeckers from Arkansas. Mm -hmm. But it does have a couple of friends down the other, other way, a passenger pigeon and an Eskimo curlew. There we go. Again, 
the last of the pigeons from you know, yeah. about 100 years ago. Yeah. It's nice that a few were preserved. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, you know, and it's wonderful because the National Geographic featured the passenger pigeon um, last year. Yeah, so that generated some interest. That, that had lines of people coming in just to see our little friend in the corner. Who would have guessed? <laughs> what happened to all the minerals? Many of them are in the hallways. All right, I think, what, should I go upstairs? Is there, um, I, f I forget what's upstairs. Valley Geology. Somewhere. That's, yes, but that's very familiar with the students. He told me a story when he was six or four, four or five. He had this habit of sneaking in just before they closed. He would hide in the tortoise shell, which in the old building was on a table sure. behind it in an alcove. So he'd sort of scrunch in there. Then the door would be locked. He'd come out and creep behind the janitor who was sweeping the floor. And the guy would turn around and like give a huge yell. <laughs> so, so that was when he told the story. You know, he was five, and he was telling me at the age of 65. This was in the, in the 80s. Oh, my goodness. So there's an interesting history to that shell. That's an old shell. That's an old shell. It's been here a long time. <laughs> it's, it's an old shell in more ways than we know. Yes. <laughs> well, the shark jaw, the shell. I miss um, that shark jaw. The, the elephant that used to sit between yeah, the man. Yeah, all, yeah. all of those are at, at the bunker. I love that shark. Yeah. You stand behind it and look up and you see the, the teeth. Yeah. Oh. And the only reason it's not here, because the, the difference between the Pratt and here, the significant difference is they decided to only put things that were real or scientifically yeah, accurate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The shark jaw itself was... The jar, like was, the, jar was the jaw was created by a paleontologist. Yeah. The teeth were real, mm. but it was estimated about a third larger than... Oh, the, so it was exaggerated. Absolutely. Right. And we know that today, but at the time it was probably... Right, they didn't to, know. Right, yeah. right, right. right. So, yeah, I just, I love that old it, building. Yeah. Oh, it's, it, it's it had building. so much personality. Yeah. All right, folks, we're going to go. We have two views. It's about rocks. Just look at all these, all these different minerals. Can you, I'll, I'll try to fi focus on, oh, here's one. I like this big one. So it gives the name, it gives its chemical formula, and it tells where it was found. How about the color of this one? Do you need to read the label, or can you guess that it's sulfur? Graphite? Where is graphite? Let's see if I can find it. There we are. That's where your pencil lead, so-called lead, is made from. I'm going to turn around, look back this way. We just saw that, so we'll walk down a little bit. I think we'll go upstairs. Yeah, that's just study areas. So one last place to visit, and then this tour will be over. So let's walk upstairs. You've already seen the, the progression of horses. You'll have a better view from up above of this, this wall. So this is a good time to come and walk around and do this tour because almost all the students have finished their exams and they've gone home. So there's no one around. Look at these old, whew, a little bit out of breath. I, I am no, no good at all at pronouncing these names, so I'm not even going to try. You can try. So these are all real, real old prehistoric skeletons. I think uh, children might know these names. That one looks very interesting. So there's the drawing again. That skin with the fins, they think it was probably to help with uh, cooling on hot days. So as the man told me downstairs, here's the early hominid collection. And unfortunately, the labels are a little small. Yep, here's skulls. Early skulls. Early hominid collection. No, I don't collect skulls, but this geology museum collects them. Here, I'll show you the, uh, the view from, from above. We saw this about 10 minutes ago. 
Here you go. Here you go. Uh, I don't think I could kill those animals because, yeah, this is a museum. I couldn't kill those animals because they've been extinct for, for a long time. Not an option. But look at this huge creature. Yep, a mammoth. Look at this one. This is really, really, I'm glad I had the, I went upstairs and got the, uh, the view from above. Well, it's nice to know you're strong. So here's some, some more skeletons, and then we'll go around the corner. And there's some, uh, some photos and stuff. I'll have to find a place to end, because I'm on the top floor. I started in the basement with the dinosaur footprints. This might be a good place to end. There's a sedimentary rock. This is all this up here is explaining the geology, the geological history. Nope, yeah, there's someone, there's two people downstairs where I just came from. This is the end of the school semester, so almost everybody has finished their exams and, and gone home. And they're about to close. It's almost four o'clock, so they're about to close. So this is just explaining the geological history of the area that I'm standing in. What it used to look like, what they think it used to look like. And look, they sneaked in. Okay, you can tell me. Tell me what happened here. It's almost like a private. I only have 11 viewers. And, and the people... And the, okay, so what happened here is, is that once at one, one point, it was a rainy day, and the rain came down hard mm -hmm. on the mud, and it made little plops in the mud. And this is a, an inverse image. The, the negative is somewhere else. This is a positive image. So you can see the little plops that the rain made in the mud. And then a tiny little dinosaur came through here, running, 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 and its tail was dragging in the mud. Maybe it was trying to get out of the rain. So that's what happened here, and then it became, became fossilized and, and eventually was, was discovered who knows how many years later. So here's a, here's a, a map of the, the local area and various samples of the rocks. But that's not as interesting as those, those prehistoric creator, creature, creatures. So what else is there? I haven't seen any one-eyed willies. Oh, look at this. Look at the, how the, the, the folding of this, this sedimentary layer occurred. Don't, don't count the part at the top where it was chiseled out of a quarry or something. But look at the, the, the compression and folding of the stratums here. Yeah, that's impressive. It's impressive that it, you can see it in such a small scale. Usually folds, geological folds, are, are much larger on the scale of, of yards and miles. So to see, to see it just compressed right here in just a, a five-foot piece is really cool. And then you have all these geological maps of Massachusetts, which probably aren't all that interesting. And here's some more, more fossils of of sea creatures. They used to have a huge display of these things. All kinds of little sea sea creatures. Yeah, no shark. There's a, a fake shark jaw that, that isn't on display because it's not realistic. Here's some fossil coral. It's really cool to see these things. Uh, the uh, turtle is not here. It's also in, in storage. I can't pronounce these, these Latin names, so you're welcome to read the tag and figure it out. Trilobites. These are pretty big trilobites. And nautiloids. So I probably could pull out a drawer. And voila, here's a drawer full of trilobites. This, is, this museum is a little smaller than what they used to have, so things are are more in storage. But you can pull out the door and look at the next one. Oh, the man who works here already saw me. We, we already had some, some conversations. This is, a, this is a public museum. Anyone can come over here and look at stuff. It's at the end. Microfossils. Yeah, keep my secret. 
So microfossils are going to be a little harder to see. I won't, I won't show those to you. So this scope is about to run out. We've, we've covered the basement to the third floor. Yeah, um, unless you're talking about an imprint in cement, any other imprints in, in rocks are going to be pretty old. So let's see where we can finish up. I'll show you the plant fossils. What's that rock behind me? Let's turn around and look. Don't count the tabletop. Here's a tree stump. There's a fossilized tree stump just sitting there on display. So that's the end of this scope. We're going to end up on the, the final picture will be these pretty impressive features. <laughs> yep, no rose out of stone. So everyone, thanks for watching. If you missed any of this, watch the replay where I start out with the, the dinosaur footprints. So I can't get this whole thing in the frame. It's shows too big. So we did the dinosaur footprints and all kinds of other neat stuff. This is a great museum. So everyone take care and we'll see you later.